Welcome everybody. My name is Carol Bideau and I am the producer of Media Fusion and today we're talking about Dega of the Impressionable Years and we have here the two writers of the script and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Rosary? Hi, I'm Rosary Hartel O'Neill. I'm delighted to be here and I began this particular uh, journey by writing a play called Dega in the Wallows which was perfected into a screenplay by Rory Schmidt called Degas the Impressionable Years. I've been following Degas in New Orleans for about, I would say at least 15 years, beginning with his initial entry here through a wonderful um, event at the New Orleans Museum of Art, which was a, a sort of, uh, I don't know if you call it retrospective, but it was all the paintings that Edgar Degas had ever done in New Orleans, about 24 of them, that came to the New Orleans Museum of Art. And myself at that time was running a theater, a Southern Rep, and was invited to do a monologue, a write a monologue for this exhibition. And I, in writing the monologue, I kept finding more and more things that were fascinating about the experience and which started out you know, as just one man talking, became eventually this enormous screenplay about Degas' life in New Orleans, which up to that point, although I had been born and raised in New Orleans, uh, as, as had Rory Schmidt, no one knew. So it was like opening up a tomb and having all these marvelous characters, you know, enter the stage in full dress. Pretty fabulous. Um for a lot of the people, there's going to be at the end a link and you'll be able to see her prolific bio. I mean, uh, Rosary is a um, very established writer and researcher and has written many, many um, books and is a Fulbright. I mean, it's extraordinary. So I really encourage you to read her bio and learn more about her and look at, you know, look at her other work. Um, and so then, Rosary, you and I met and we started talking about doing um, Degas', Degas story. And then we brought on, you suggested bringing on Rory. And so Rory, tell us a little bit about what, you know, what this transition from um, Rosary's uh, play and her, her research, you know, you bring being brought on as the, the next writer. How was that process for you? And introduce yourself too. Well, um, I'm pleased to be here. My name is Rory O'Neill Schmidt. I just want to say I am Rosary's daughter. Uh, we share the first same first name. Um, my mom indeed is brilliant. She does have a PhD uh, and has written extensively and researched extensively. I, I, I try, try humbly following her footsteps, preserving my PhD as well. And so basically this process is one of several projects my mom and I have collaborated on together. Um, when we just decided to work on this together, part of my vision was how to really transform um, the writing into a, a powerful visual narrative. So with the element of the screenplay, how can I take the play? How can I take her novel? How can I take a, a former screenplay, use the best pieces for a version? How can we further develop it uh, and, and enrich the experience and really immerse our viewers with what New Orleans is and what New Orleans was and how uh, they can really relate to the struggle of an artist trying to find himself and trying to find home. I know it's, it's a pretty, I, I think you've done a tremendous job, uh, both of you, um, in, uh, in getting all of this uh, story out there. And then I think that um, through, uh, uh, you know, the, our desire to create this and do this um, also with uh, European partners, we've really um, expanded the story so that it's basically Degas' early years. It goes from, and you know, and, and uh, Rosary, you had a brilliant uh, way of, um, and I don't think we're taking too much from the story, but just opening it up and, and letting everybody know um, about his family that was both not only French, but Italian. And then, um, and then sort of starting there, it's very dramatic the way you, you yeah, start this now. It's really, really, um, it, it's, it's a true pleasure um, uh, seeing its evolution and, and seeing how 
Um, we we get audiences to learn about this artist, and it is, as you say, Rory, that whole process of of seeing how an artist evolves and um, and comes into being. Um, and uh, you know, and I think that very few people know that he actually came to New Orleans and had family here. And during one of the most difficult times in, in you know, maybe tell us a little bit about where, what was New Orleans like when Degas came here? <laughs> uh, well, you know, yeah, that's, rough, but that's what it was. <laughs> it was a little doggy here. Uh, first of all, acknowledge uh, Rory, who is uh, just uh, along with her PhD in art, has this prolific background and a degree in visual arts and photography. So she had, and you know, Edgar Degas also uh, was a photographer, I studied that at the beginning of the evolution of photography. So she has this wonderful way of sort of taking stories and putting them into a visual, visual splendor. And I think that we were both kind of in love with France because from 1992 on, I spent every summer in France, as did Rory. And the one thing that's economical to do is to go to the museums. So we went to museums and she always wanted to see the Degas paintings. Every museum in Paris, she said, I have to see the Degas paintings because she loved those. Little did we know that, you know, years later, we would be actually delving into this love of Degas and find that he actually had a mother from New Orleans. We almost felt like maybe we were related to him. He had a mother <laughs> who was from New Orleans, right? And, uh, you know, all these relatives, 30 relatives still living in New Orleans, descendants of his brother, Brene. So we had, uh, I think, kind of a karmic experience, but I also would say that Rory had a sort of a developed appreciation of Degas and she, as a young child, in her impressionable years, she was enamored of the beauty of his painting. So it was particularly interesting to me that he came here in a horrible time, 18, um, 72, uh, what was that, eight or nine years after the Civil War. And so he really saw uh, New Orleans that was bankrupt and devastated. So although he had these magnificent paintings that he eventually painted, it was almost in contrast to the ugliness that he saw when he came for the first and only time to Louisiana and spent that time uh, in the rental property uh, today, for us, it, it seemed like it's rather nice, but in that time, in the lavish splendor from which he came, it was considered terrible, you know, with very few assistants and everyone cleaning up after themselves and 18 people living in, what, six or seven rooms. So it was, it would be difficult today, but it was almost insupportable then. So that's all I have to say. The story was intriguing to me, particularly because he said, you know, je suis presque le fils de la Louisiana. I'm almost the son of Louisiana. And I think Warren and I felt like we were almost the daughter of France. Um, so I just read that way. So Rory, um, tell us also maybe a little bit of what you felt was um, interesting about his time here in Louisiana and what he found. Mm. Well, uh, the, he was the only Impressionist to come to the United States, I think is very important for us to, to document. Um, I do think that something important to point out is uh, the environment that he entered very bravely. So uh, there was yellow fever, there was scarlet fever, there was pandemics happening. I mean, from the ship, they had to actually, is it safe to go to New Orleans right mm -hmm. now? So really being able to relate to that sense of a pandemic and the health crisis and 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 revolt and revolution you know and i think that uh in our time right now we can still relate to relate to yeah, the struggles we're yeah, experiencing absolutely. to survive and the sense of uncertainty so um i think i was drawn to to understanding what it was like to live in that affect and mm -hmm. also because the house still exists and several of the architecture similar exists today visiting it knowing um, some of the history and trying to really put myself, what would it be like to, to live with that and to endure, to not give up, to mm -hmm. continue on painting such beautiful works that would transform the world. Yeah, and you know, one thing that I also felt that was very interesting and, and, and what you're saying, Rory, I think is very uh, revelatory about this, uh, this whole project is that it is actually very contemporary, contemporaneous to, or and people could feel, um, you know, something very, uh, <laughs> um, 
you know, to our, uh, uh, what we're going through ourselves right now. Plus the dog is, is being very, um, he's our, our greatest critic. And so, um, but I also thought it was really interesting that he had this um, uh, uh, very conflicted family background. I mean, we're post-war, you know, living in the South, um, and let's say the word, I mean, there was, there was KKK around him and uh, very close to him. And he also had, um, uh, you know, uh, French or, or African um, uh, family that, that, you know, were very close to him and, and he had to, um, he, he encountered and was trying very hard and was probably the most sympathetic of, of his of his American family to who they were. And so um, <laughs> I guess, I guess Rory, <laughs> Rosary has decided, she's like Elvis, she leaves the building. So, um, so I, I, you know, I, I think that um, it, that was really fascinating that you, you know, that whole story that you brought out in the script as well. Yeah, to really understand his, his family, both who was accepted and the, the relatives of color who were not accepted and, and how he grappled with understanding identity, race and politics in New Orleans coming from France, where he was used to things and relationships being very different. Um, and trying to understand his place in everything and how to really navigate that world. Right. And, and um, you know, the, the one also story that I feel that all of us as women really also very much related to is the pro basically one of the lead characters in all of our story is Estelle. His, his uh, what I think, you know, in the research, and I think that even as you know, uh, well researched that as both of you have um, uh, made this project, we still don't know every single detail of anybody's life. It's impossible. But I thought that you know it was very, very. Um, I think it could be well established that he did his his true love was Estelle. So tell us a little bit about that story, if you can. Well, I think uh, love is probably the pivot for every uh, Frenchman. They say that Frenchmen make love three times as much as Americans. I don't know, that's the Roma. But definitely, uh, he had three cousins, and she was definitely, according to most critics, you know, the love of his life. Now, how much they actually did, we don't know all the details, I mean, as you don't. But she was definitely his favorite cousin. And uh, they had plenty of, of time to be together because she and her uh, sister, Dee Dee, and her mother spent the three years of a civil war in France with the Degas brothers. And so it was a custom for young women from the South to go to France uh, for visits. But uh, the civil war, they sent them there to protect them uh, from harm. So uh, she became very intimate with the brothers there. So that was great. And then she ended up marrying as you know, uh, Edgar's brother, uh, for various reasons, and it was extremely unhappy. So then you have Edgar coming in with the money from France, and you have Estelle living with the brother and bankrupt, and you get an idea of some of the situation uh, going on there. Well, it's, it's, it's an man. extraordinary story, and I don't know, uh, Rose, uh, Rory, if you uh, would like to add to any of this, um, uh, you know, what, what you're feeling of, with, uh, of Estelle and everything is. Sure, I think uh, one of the biggest fears an artist has is mm. going blind and losing um, his sight. And Edgar Degas did have a, a, a genetic disease, or it could be from his being wounded when he was uh, in the war uh, in Europe. Uh, he was losing his vision and Estelle, mm. his cousin and also sister-in-law, uh, she was also going blind. And so being able to relate to that sense of loss, you know, feeling disempowered in a world that's crumbling around you, and then you, you can't even see out of one eye is what she was experiencing. Um, and he had a big fear of losing his sight even more. And so as we know from the research is that that was one of the reasons 
why he was drawn to paint indoors and why he was drawn to paint in theaters to really protect his eyes and uh, why he was drawn to probably capture her the most to understand what was going within her world that she could no longer see. Right. And then, no, of course, because her vision was bad, she was sitting around the house. And when he was in New Orleans for six months, she was available to talk to because she was there. So that was compelling for him in terms of painting her. And they say so many painters have sex with it. I mean, they say this, whether it's true. But you think about it, you're staring at someone, they're gorgeous. You're looking at their skin. I mean, one thing leads to another. She was the most beautiful one, and he was alone with her a lot. I don't think you really need to say too much more than that. <laughs> Certainly, I love the writer's imagination, and uh, but I think the, that it's also, you know, you're probably right. Even um, in the in their social situation, um, I think that the at least the way you portray it in the screenplay, it feels so right. So um, I really want to thank both of you for bringing me along in this creative process. It's been a lot of fun. And I, you know, I've really enjoyed working with both of you. And um, we'll be doing a lot more of these um, podcasts so that people get to understand the whole process of making Degas the Impressionable Years. And um, and we uh, thank you and um, and look forward to uh, more of this. Thank you so much, ladies. Bye. Bye, bye, Carol. Bye. bye.